Welcome back to Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living. We are on part three, day three of our Spring into Home series. And a lot of times we spend our time on this podcast giving you tips and tricks and resources and all the things to make your homes beautiful. So lots of talk about the form, but not so much about the function. And so this series is designed to do just that, to create systems and give you ideas for how to make your home not just beautiful, but functional as well. And one thing that I've said in each episode, and I will say it again, and I do say it in my Facebook group, and I say it on repeat all the time, is that when we create a beautiful home, it doesn't really matter how pretty it is, what wallpaper we choose, what pillows we choose on the couch. If we can't see it, because of all the clutter that's in our way, or if we can't see it because our home's not organized and our stuff spews out onto all the things, or we can't see it because our home is just a dirty mess, it doesn't matter how pretty our home is. So these three weeks have been spent giving you the foundation for setting the stage for the beautiful things, setting the stage for creating those spaces that really just light you up, creating a home that you love coming home to. That is really the mantra here, right? We want to create home environments that we love coming home to. We are all busy mamas, and one of our jobs is to not only nurture the minds and the bodies of our teeny tinies, but to create spaces that feel safe, that feel loving, that nurture their productivity and their growth. Before we can get to a place of having our homes be ready for the pretty things, we need to get the function happening. We need to get some systems into place to make it a little bit more efficient, a little bit more manageable. So that's what we're talking about today. Today, in part three of our Spring into Home series, we are talking about cleaning. And if you have teeny tinies living with you, we're going to include them too, because we all know we want to raise responsible, capable adults who are not going to be relying on their moms to come over to their apartments when they are 23 years old to clean the space for them. (laughs) Because boys, if you listen, I am not doing that, okay? (laughs) I mean, maybe. Maybe I would help you when you're moving, okay? But I am not doing that. This is your responsibility and you need to learn how to do it. So that's what today is all about. Managing that and even sharing that responsibility and that load with the ones you share your home with. I hope you find some tips and tricks that you do not have currently up your sleeve in today's episode. Enjoy! We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message. Home, it's not about the stuff, it's about the story. And whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating, Goodwill shopping budget, and I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank, and I'm sharing it all with you. Tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style, where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. I'm curious. I think there are about three camps of home cleaners. Okay, maybe four. Here's what I think. And I am imagining that you might fall very easily into one of these categories. So think about this. Option one, are you a oh my gosh, company's coming, I need to clean, and I need to clean all the things, and don't forget all the things, because they might look at the baseboards, they might look at the tops of the doors, they might look, company is coming, company's coming! (laughs) And that is your motivation for cleaning, basically, the fire's lit under your bottom in order to get the job done. And it might have been two months since the last time. That's option one. Are you one of those? Okay, option two. You don't have the time, you don't care about doing it, you just want a clean house, but you are just going to hire out. You don't care how much it is, and if you're eating ramen in order to do it, you are a let's hire out. Option three, cleaning? What's that? (laughs) I don't care. I'll do it when maybe, I don't know, there's a blue moon. I'll do it every once in a while. I could really care less. Whatever. Or... 
are you an option four? And I do think maybe option four is a very special breed. And if you, and I love it. If that is you, yay, yay, yay for you. Option four, you just do it because you love it. You love it. It lights you up. You are so excited about it. You can't wait until Saturday or your free moment because you are just going to get that mop out and you're going to put it to town. You buy multiple br- brooms a year because you go through them like crazy. It is just super, super enjoyable for you. Also, you might be one of those people who, when you come over to someone's house, you offer to do it for them. Okay, which one are you? I'm super curious and I do want to know, which one are you? Pop into the Facebook group and tell me, are you an option one? Crap, company's coming, do it now. Option two, hire out. Option three, what cleaning? Or option four, you love it and cannot wait for your next date night with your mom. I would really like to be number two, but that is super not realistic for me. I've already done the we're living on ramen and goodwill trips to get the fancy clothes, and I'm kind of over that. So I definitely will do all the jobs myself if I can save a little bit of money in order to invest that in other areas that kind of amplify our life in other ways. Now, if you are a higher out awesome. I someday, that is a goal someday. But right now for me, I really would love that, but it's just not an option. Option option 3, the cleaning, what's that? I can't do that either. I love a clean house. I love it. I just don't like cleaning. <laughs> but every time, I swear, every time I mop the floor, I will remark and I say the same thing. It is like put it on auto repeat. Greg I love a clean house. Greg, I just love the way the floors feel. I love it. It just, I I enjoy it so, so much. There's a little bit of freedom in that cleanliness. So landing in that space of, I just don't care. I just don't think I can ever be there. If that is you, bless you. But maybe these tips will be helpful for you if you know that maybe you should start caring. Option four, loving it. I Guys, I just don't. I don't love it. I have over the history of time, over the history of me, over the history of me living in my own space or taking care of my own space, have landed into option one time and time and time again. An embarrassing amount. In fact, so embarrassing that I would on purpose plan get togethers at my home so it would motivate me to clean my house. (laughs) Yes. And if mother-in-law was coming over, yeah, that was the time to do the baseboards. That was the time to do the door tops. That was the time to do the things that might not have gotten done. But here's the thing. My tune has shifted and it's shifted recently because I have not ever found an option five until recently. And recently my eyes have been opened and I want to share that with you because maybe you're looking for a system that you can put into place that really works for you. I have tried others before. I've tried getting out of the habit of just planning events so that it would motivate me. I've tried every Saturday, we're going to spend the first two hours cleaning the house. Or I've tried, you know what, we're going to clean the house before we do the special event on the Saturday. Having that little motivator that, oh, we've got to get the chores done before we do the special thing. Kind of similar to the idea of companies coming, but none of these have stuck. And it's no surprise that these ideas, these systems I tried to put into place didn't stick. It's no surprise because my approach was backwards. It was wonky. It was kind of like this. If I'm going to run a marathon, I am not going to go out on day two after thinking I'm going to run a marathon and just run the dang thing. I'm not going to do that. That would hurt. That would be unenjoyable. I would probably get injured and I just would end up hating running. What am I going to do instead? I'm going to decide I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to have a little training program. Every week, I'm going to increase my mileage. I'm going to do three miles the first week, and then I'm going to do six or nine or 12 or whatever. If you're a marathoner, you know that that your training program is much more nuanced. But you get the idea. If we approach cleaning our home, like I need to clean the entire home on a, on a weekend, that can feel overwhelming as overwhelming as saying, I'm going to run the marathon. That's the end result. And I'm going to do it tomorrow without training at all. Now you don't need to train in order to clean, but the idea of breaking it down into bite-sized chunks, so it becomes more manageable is really the heart and the essence of the system I'm going to teach you today. Are you super curious? 
Okay, let's dive right in. Now, I do want to note right now that I did not invent this system. Someone smarter than me did, and I heard about it through a podcast. And when I was sharing about this, the system that I've adopted on my own and tweaked it to use in my own home, I was sharing about that with a friend. She mentioned, oh, did you hear it from such and such, which was not where I heard it. So what I do want to say is... If you're taking credit for it somewhere out there listening and you are the developer of the system, yay, name yourself. We want to know and we want to know who to think. But just like we hear bloggers or we hear podcasters or we hear YouTubers or we hear whoever we hear and take as the originator of ideas, I am not. This is not my original idea. I'm just tweaking it and using it and it is working for me. And so I want to share it so badly. I want to share it with all of you because maybe you were stuck in one of those four ways of it not working. So just wanted to put that out there in case someone really should take credit. Now, On a side note and opposite of this, the other stuff I do mention to you guys, guess what? It comes from my own brain. (laughs) They are systems that I've developed or they are formulas I've developed or they are uh, vocabulary that I've developed throughout my years of experience. So I will give credit where credit is due, but this one I can't claim. But this one is genius. So let's dive right in. Knowing that each month generally has four weeks, That's four Saturdays or four Sundays or whatever Friday, Monday, whatever your weekend is or whatever free day is that you get to clean, it has four in them. So knowing that there are four, we're going to break our home into four sections. And you can call section whatever you want. You can call it quad, section, zone, region, area, division, department, whatever you want to call it, or just number whatever it is, break it into four sections. I call mine quads. So On the first week of the month, I'm cleaning quad one, second, quad two, quad three, quad four. Now, here's how you can break it up. There are two ways that you can do it. One way is to really take a bird's eye view of your home and to develop a cross section of what your home looks like within that cross section. Doing that might not make it equal, equal parts. It might make it equal parts in terms of size, but not necessarily in terms of quantity or how hard it is to clean. So another way to do that is to just start by writing a list. Write your list of all of the rooms within your home and then divvy them up into four sections. And can you equally weigh the rooms within those sections? depending on how hard it is to clean. So for example, my laundry room takes me about five minutes. It's not super hard. I am not going to pair that one with another room in my home, the downstairs bathroom that takes not very much time. I'm going to pair that, put that in the section where there's heavy cleaning happening. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dusting or intricacy. It's a lot more detailed like my office. My office takes a little bit longer. Or the kitchen. The kitchen takes a little bit longer. So I'm going to pair the laundry room with a room that is opposite in weight in order to balance it out. Because ultimately on each Saturday, which is my cleaning day, I want to have the about the same amount of cleaning to do. I don't want it to be really, really heavy one week, really, really heavy another week, and then I'm done in 10 minutes for the other two Saturdays. I want it to be balanced out. So that's what I mean by equal weight. Here's an example of what my quads look like. In quad one, I have my entryway, my library, my dining room, and the playroom. In quad two, I have the kitchen, the what we call the sunroom, but what was the Eden kitchen? We just don't have an Eden area there, just the bar. And then the living room. In quad three, I have the downstairs bath, master bedroom and bath, and then Owen's room. And in quad four, we have the boys' bedroom, which they they share a room, my office, my laundry, all the hallways, and then the garage. Now, by garage, what I mean by that, I don't clean my garage. I just go out there and I tidy up. So the shoes that come out of the shoe locker, I put back in. I might sweep. I just kind of quick, quick, quick. Now, I'm not going crazy and mopping out there. Now, already some of you might have caught this and you might be wondering, wait a second, you only clean your master bathroom once a month or your downstairs bathroom once a month? Okay, now before you get grossed out, what I want you to know is that there are rhythms in place within the week in order to keep them tidy and in order to keep them clean. But the deep clean are the things that are happening on the quad days, on the Saturdays. So 
it gets the deep, deep, deep clean, but it does get the surface clean throughout the week through the rhythms that we've created within our own family. So the chores that kids have to do every day, the natural tidying up after dinner, the sweeping of the floors, even the mopping might happen on a rhythmic routine throughout the week. But the deep cleaning is what's happening on those quad days. So good question. I knew you had it. (laughs) All right. So here's what quad one looks like, just to give you an idea of how we can manage this. Because I alluded to this last week when you might have been listening to the organizing podcast about how I can clean my home in one, one hour a week. Yes. Yes, it is. When you break it up into manageable bite sized pieces and you're only deep cleaning one section a week, what happens is you end up with a clean home, a a company ready, a guest ready, a mother in law ready home all the time. You just rotate through the section so that you're not doing it all in one day. Guys, let's throw that out the window. That is too much work. Unless you love doing it and you really want that date with your mop, fantastic. But otherwise, this is so much more manageable. So quad one, what that looks like for me, that happens on week one of the month. So if you remember, I have the entryway, the library, the dining room, and the playroom. Nowadays, the playroom is in combination with the guest room. We have a Murphy bed in there. And it looks very different than what the playroom looks like even five years ago. So in just a second, I'm going to get to what I would have done had I known about this system five years ago when the playroom was a hot mess. I'm going to get to that. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about my rhythms, but we're going to talk just a little bit about how to manage the quad cleaning. So to set the stage for you, here are some of the the pieces of furniture and things in each of these spaces. So in the entryway, there's, of course, the hallway, there's a mirror on the wall, there's an entryway table, which has storage, and that storage is um, has is shoe storage for Greg and I, as well as um, storage for everyday things. So when we were needing masks every day that held the masks, it holds our library books, that kind of thing. There's an entryway rug. The library, of course, has seating in there. It has the bookshelves. It has the windows, curtains, floor lamps. In the dining room, there's a table. Sometimes every once in a while, there's a dining room uh, rug. Um, There's a credenza in there. There's some table lamps. There's some plants. In the playroom, there's window curtains, there's toys, there's a seating area, there's some bean bags, there's of course the storage area for their games and gaming devices, things like that. Okay, so that pretty much sets the stage. You hear all of the things that are in that space. So how do I divvy it up? By the way, this is something that I could manage on my own, and I do think it's something that I could manage within that same one hour ish time period. But because I really feel very strongly about making sure that I am not the only one cleaning our home, making sure that I model to my children that I am not the maid here, that I don't get paid to clean the home, so I'm not the janitor, that we are all equal participants in the way that we use our home, the way that we take care of our home, the way that we clean our home. I want to communicate that to them. So we have chores in this hour. And this, because I divvy up some of these chores right now, it allows me to do the thing called mopping, which I don't leave for one time a month. I do that. I try to do that weekly. Of course, there are some weeks when I can't get to it on that quad cleaning day, but maybe it happens on the 10th day. Maybe it's every 12 days, something like that. But divvying up the chores within the quad to all of the other participants in the home allows me to deep clean the things that can't wait a month. So the bathrooms, the kitchen sink, the countertops, even the floors. Those are the things that are high priority or changing the sheets. I'm going to throw that one in there too. So as they are doing the little chores within the quad cleaning that keep our house maintained and clean constantly, I am doing the deeper cleaning thing. So here's what it looks like in quad one and the chores. And by the way, my kids might say that they are cleaning for an entire hour straight, but seriously, you're going to hear it and you're going to think this is ridiculously easy. (laughs) Why have I not adopted this sooner? Okay, so in the entryway, I want to have that rug shaken out. I want to have um, the credenza, the, the entryway table there. I want to have that 
uh, dusted. I want the mirror washed and I want to have, um, because those are shoe storage areas, I do want to have those opened up and vacuumed out. Okay, right? Super easy. Like four things. In the library, it is a bookshelf, so I do want to have that dusted, but I'm not, this is not the deep clean dust. This is the, the kiddos can take the rag and walk and wipe around the bookshelf. This is not the let's remove everything and redesign it and really clean it. This is not the time for that. I'll tell you when I do that in just a second. This is the washing the windows time. This is also the time when we take a deep clean to the curtains because those kitties, they like to go sit at that window and their fur can rub on the curtain. So this is a de-kitty furring the windows. It's also cleaning the coffee table. It's cleaning the pony. I do have pony walls, so I do have those little ledges in between rooms, so I do need those dusted. It's the baseboard time. Basically, basically in here, it is the heavy dusting. That's really what it is, and cleaning any glass surfaces, windows and mirrors and coffee tables, things like that. In the dining room, kind of same thing. It is the heavy dusting and the glass surfaces as well as the D kitty furring the curtains. You probably don't have that on your list if you don't have kitties. So yay for you. That's awesome. All right. That's not a whole lot, right? Dusting a little area, cleaning the window surfaces, cleaning the glass surfaces and de de furring some areas as well as vacuuming out the the shoe storage area. Upstairs in the playroom, again, we have curtains, we have glass on the windows, we have we have the dusting happening. There's not a whole lot of heavy cleaning up here because that is an expectation that we have that needs to be done before our kids get screen time. So I know that, you know, I'm not going to walk in there and I'm not going to see a complete disaster. It's not going to look like a tornado hit the space because we have allowed the kiddos the opportunity (laughs) and I am being very gingerly with how I'm saying it we've allowed them the opportunity to learn as they go so that it's not so overwhelming to for them I don't want them to spend their entire Saturday cleaning I don't want that I've never ever wanted that and there are spaces within their their own individual spaces that do get worse than others like bedrooms but in the playroom this is a common space and the expectation is they tidy that up before they use the xbox before they use um, before they get out the table to do the model they tidy up after they're done they they are constantly tidying just like i'm constantly tidying the living room so when they go up there to clean it or they do the little chore on a quad day it is not super hard it literally is dusting, cleaning the window, and cleaning the kitty curtains. Pretty much that's it. If I think of anything else, I'll pop in and tell you, but that is really pretty much it. At very, very, very most, it takes them 20 minutes. You guys, that is not bad. That is not bad at all. Okay, so while I am doing, I'm having them do that, and what I do is I generally say, okay, one boy gets to choose, they get to choose the dusting and they dust that ent- entire quad area. One kiddo does the windows and the glass surfaces for the entire quad area. And one kiddo does the kitty fur as well as the vacuuming of the storage. 20 minutes. That's not a lot. That's not a big ask. Of course, if you were here, a fly on the wall on those quad mornings, they are kids and they would rather be playing. They would rather be doing something else. So sometimes I meet resistance, but it gets over with quick as a wink. Now, while they're doing that, I am, I'm not also expecting that they're going to dust the way I dust. I'm not expecting that. So I'm not necessarily going to go back behind them and dust over unless it's really kind of a yucky job, right? But if they were four, would I still have them dust? Sure. I remember when my kiddos were four and they loved doing what mom did. In fact, I remember some really fun times when when Henry and Charlie and I would get into our master bath because it's, it's really big and we would all be in the bathtub and we would all be cleaning something on there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does make a difference when you have those little fingers helping you. Now, back then I would have dusted over them. Now I don't. I might say, hey guys, this, um, let's try that again. Or if it's not a big deal, I just do it for them. While they're doing that job, I am prepping all of the downstairs to mop. I'm doing that. Or I am, if the kitchen is a disaster, I am 
taking off all of the stuff out of the sink in order to deep clean the sinks because that is definitely a job that needs to be done more than once a month. Same thing with the countertop. So I'm either working on one of those two things. Greg, meanwhile, he is vacuuming the stairs and the upstairs carpet area. So I take care of the downstairs floors. Greg takes care of the upstairs floors and he does that weekly. I do my job weekly while the kids do their quad cleaning. Now you heard all of the divvy up chores. I know that if we were busy with soccer, which oftentimes happens, I know that I could, I could really quickly save that window cleaning for a Monday morning. I could really quickly save that, that kitty deferring for a Tuesday afternoon. It's not going to take me very long. So I know there is some leeway there. So this is not a super stringent thing, but I know it needs to happen sometime within that week. I try to get it done on a Saturday where we can all just do it put on some fun music and get it done so that we're all equal participants. But sometimes life happens and sometimes we have schedules that we need to follow that don't allow for a quad cleaning. Okay, you guys, that is it. That is it. In quad two, it looks a little different because it's a different space in a different room, but you get the idea. In quad two, that was the kitchen and the sunroom and the living room. There's still dusting, there's still windows, there's still curtains. The deep, deep cleaning stuff, like the kitchen counters and the kitchen sink, I take care of that. That is the job that I do. And that is a little bit more laborious for me because I'm also wanting to mop that day because I try to do that once a week. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes I'm exhausted after doing the kitchen sink and counter, and that's fine. But working all together in order to tidy up and do the dusting of the windowsills and dusting of the little ledges, dusting of the baseboard, dusting of the lamp bases, that stays maintained for the month. And it just continues to be this cycle that every first Saturday of the month is quad one, second Saturday, quad two, third Saturday, quad three, and fourth, quad four. Now what happens on those fifth Saturdays? Because I just checked And there were, let's see, there are five, not five, there are four months within this year that have a fifth week and April is one of them. July is another, September is another, and December is another. On those fifth weeks, I still will do the mopping or I will still do um, whatever that deep cleaning thing is that I do need to get done. However, this is the day that I would set aside for cleaning the playroom. This is the big project day. This is the day I would set aside for not just tidying up the garage. I might actually go through it a little bit. This is the day where I might take off the things on the bookshelf and really give it a deep clean. I'm not doing all of those projects. I'm choosing one and it makes it so much more manageable. I want to mention too that during that quad cleaning time, as I'm getting ready to do the, the floors downstairs, Greg is doing the floors upstairs, this might also be the time when I check those bathrooms to see how good of a job we did maintaining it throughout the week, which I'll get to in a second, and if any of those need to be a little bit more deep cleaned. It's also the time, too, when I might, before I start the mopping, I might go and strip some beds. By the way, I have the boys strip their own. They make their own beds, too, but but they strip them and they bring them to me so that I do the washing. So that's kind of happening simultaneously. Now, what do I mean about the bathrooms during the week? In our home, we all have chores, right? Moms and dads, we carry the brunt of the work, but we also think that it's it's our responsibility, again, to teach the kiddos to, I don't want to say pull their weight, that sounds really mean, but to participate. And so We have three chores each week that need to happen on a daily-ish or every other day or when it's needed basis. And those three chores get changed weekly so that the boy, one boy is not doing the same thing each time. So in our home, this is what we have. We have the kitchen aid, and that person is responsible for unloading the dishes, unloading the dishwasher, for setting the table for taking the napkins upstairs to the laundry room after dinner and for wiping down the table after dinner. That job is specifically for the KitchenAid. Every once in a while, we might say, hey, can you help me unload the dish drain too? Then we have the clutter control. And the clutter control is the person who takes care of straightening the pillows on the couch. They 
take out the recycle bin, empty it into the larger recycle bin, and they also vacuum the floor. We have a couple of vacuums. We have one that is a little bit more beastly, and that is one that Greg carries him down, up and down the stairs. He does that work, but we have one that's a little bit more manageable for little fingers, and we bought it years ago so that they could help with that, and their job is to vacuum the floors. I've mentioned before that living in the Northwest, we bring in a lot of pine needles. We bring in a lot of dirt and and stuff when we come in from outside. So the area rug by the front door, the area rug by the back door, and generally the wood floors. That needs to be done daily. And then we have the bathrooms. And the bathrooms sounds really like a daunting chore, but seriously, this is what the bathrooms is. There's two bathrooms. I don't have them do mine. They just do the downstairs bathroom in their own. They're responsible for wiping countertops, wiping mirrors sometime during the week, wiping the hinges. Yes, if you have boys, you know what I'm talking about. Wiping the outside of the toilet. And then on that deep clean day, whoever's in charge of the bathroom, I help them learn how to deep clean the bathroom. So it does get a surface clean. And that's what I mean on those quad mornings when I'm checking the status of the bathrooms to see if they actually need a deep clean sooner rather than later. That's when. But they are getting that surface clean from the kiddos each week and probably a couple times a week. Now, are they cleaning the hinges every day? No, they're not. But they're cleaning the hinges a couple days a week they have a little schedule it's written out for them. They know what days they need to do that so that they can manage it on their own and not have to ask me, mom, can I have screen time? Well, have you cleaned your bathroom? Mom, can I do, well, have you tidied up? Have you emptied the recycle bin? Mom, can I, they know that these are the jobs that need to be done again before they have screen time. This is something that has worked for us and our family. I know that every family is different. Some people choose to pay their kids for participating in chores. We don't choose to do that. We do give them payable jobs. And these are the bigger, heavier, hardier jobs like vacuuming out my car or washing my car or raking up the leaves. We just had someone come to dethatch and aerate our lawn. This is going to be a payable job. That's a big raking job this afternoon. So they're going to help with that. And it's an opportunity for them to work hard in order to earn money so that they can save it, spend it, invest it how they want. And that system works for us. So participating in home maintenance is something that we just say, hey, we're a family. We all participate equally. Not equally. Are you kidding? Mom and dad do most of it. But we all participate and we all share the burden. So there you have it. An easy, manageable solution for cleaning your house that doesn't require hiring out, not caring, trying to learn to love the mop, or waiting until you have an event planned where people are coming over to see it. This works for us, and I'm so thankful I stumbled across this idea of quad cleaning years ago. Taking it and tweaking it and making it my own combining it with the chores that we naturally have for the kiddos and really empowering them to become participants in the way that we care for our things, the way that we work together, the way that we respect each other and each other's roles within our home. This has been something that has been really a joy and it has turned this idea of crap, I have to clean the house and I have to do it all. And it's so overwhelming and exhausting and not fun to something that is manageable. And it quite honestly gets done way more often because it's not such a burden. I hope you find those tools and those tips useful for you and, and that you can apply those to your own home. I want to hear how it goes. So make sure you pop into my Facebook group and share away. And if you have a different system, tell me because I know that for years I was looking for a system and not one of them stuck until this one, but maybe you have a different one. So I want to hear about it. Pop into the Facebook group to let us all know. And the Facebook group is a great place for you to ask questions. If you want to know a little bit more about how I do chores with the boys, or if you want to know a little bit more about the quad system, pop into the Facebook group and ask away. And real quick before we go, I know what holiday is coming up. Do you have it marked on your calendar? May 8th, all of us busy mamas, it's our day. It's our day. What are you doing to celebrate? Do you have any plans? I want to hear what is your favorite yearly tradition. Do you have one? Or is it new every year? You heard me talk about what I used to ask for 
years ago, and it had something to do with the cleaning. If you didn't hear that, go back and listen to last episode. Spoiler alert, I asked for a clean house I didn't have to clean. That was when I didn't have this system. That was when it was so overwhelming to me that I did it all in one day. And looking back, I wish I would have known what I know today, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Now, I wish I could go over to all of your homes and help you have a clean home so that you can really just relish the time that you spend with your family that day. I can't do that. I wish I could. But what I can do is I can offer you a fun design package because some of you are still sitting on the fence. Some of you are still wondering if it's time to take the leap, if it's time to get out of inaction and into action in home design, moving your home design needle forward to finally create the home that you love coming home to, to finally create the space that you think, that doesn't look janky. That actually looks really lovely and I want to spend my time here. If you are wanting wanting to finally take the leap, I've created a Mother's Day package just for you. Actually, it's for your husband for you, but you know he's going to ask. He's going to say, hey, what do you want for Mother's Day? So I created it for him to gift you, but you are the relay person. <laughs> Here's what's in the package. You get one design phone call with me. That is a pre-planning phone call. Basically, I learn what it is you like, what it is you need, what it is you want, and I get an idea of how we can work together so that I can understand your aesthetic. And then I go to work creating for you a mood board. A mood board is a way for me to get my ideas, my design ideas, into a format that is visually appropriate for you. You can think of it as a visual map that helps you move forward. That visual map is shoppable. So the products that are selected are selected specifically for you and the direction that you want to take your room based on the conversation we've had. And you can shop right from the mood board. It is that fantastic. Now, sometimes we don't get it straight away on the mood board. You might want a couple different products. And so this package also includes one modification. And that means if you want to say, hey, I actually changed my mind. I don't want farmhouse. I want to see boho. We might add a few more characteristics of boho and away you go. All of those are again shoppable. And the last product that is in the package is access to my bookshelf styling guide. This is a styling guide that isn't just for bookshelves. This is for all flat surfaces. It's the, it's the method I developed to help you understand how you can get that nuanced look, that fine-tuned look from all the pretty pictures you see on Pinterest, on Instagram, how they make their mantles look so good, how they make their coffee tables look so good. My formula is created just for you, and it's in the bookshelf style guide. Package details are available on my website, figandfarmathome.com. And shh, I won't tell if you won't tell if you end up buying the gift for yourself. All right, friends, that deal is good until May 1st. So go check it out and tell a friend and your hubby. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Hey, real quick before you go, if you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.